maskipako, eli täällä välillä tullaan maskissa ja pois. Me yritetään näin, että puhuja olisi kuitenkin ilman maskia, että kuulee. Mutta mitä on tänään todella tärkeää, että toivottavasti kaikki pääsit tänne Zoomiin. Siellä on sitten hatapuhelin numero Sinikan suuntaan, mutta erittäin tärkeää on, että pelkaa luenoitsia voi olla mikrofoni aktiivisena. Eli se on täällä vasemmalla reunalla, kun liikutaan hiiri, sinne tulee semmoinen musta lista. Ja siellä heti ensimmäisenä siellä on semmoinen mikrofoni kuvake, joka sitten pitää olla punaisella viivalla ili, koska siellä teidän Katsomishuoneesta voi tulla tausta-ääni, joka sitten tulee kaikille, eli kolmelle kymmenelle osallistujille. Meillä on aika tiivis ohjelma. And we will start with our guest speaker from Taiwan. I would like to introduce Professor Mark Chien Chin Chen, who join us and tell us their practical experience with the biosafety of cytopathology and practical impacts in Asia Pacific region in COVID-19 pandemic time. Mark, Hello, in, everyone. Addition, in addition to his teaching activities, he is also very active in world cytopathology community. He authored almost 100 papers. He is also involved in biobanking and of course, practical cytopathology. He is one of the board members of Cancer Cytopathology, which is the world-renowned journal for cytopathologists. His CV is very, very long, but I think that the most important is just to give my microphone mute and Mark will give us talk. There will be possibility for discussion at the end of the lecture. And already now there is this chat function. You will find it in the middle. You can put some questions there and I can then read them. So Mark, please share your screen. Thank you. Mm. Uh, you should close your share and then, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, can everyone see my desktop? Thank you. It's okay. It's okay, my voice, everyone can hear me? Okay, good. Thank you for Ivana and thank you for all my Finnish friends is um, I'm sorry I cannot be in Finnish now but I'm really look forward to because all my family love to go to Finnish and Norway and Sweden is also our best choice to visit but not in winter you know it's too cold I'm from a uh, I'm from a small country in Ireland so now today I would like to share my limited experience on the biosafety uh, of cytopathology. So I hope everyone can give me feedback and I would like to answer everything as, as do my best. And this year I have two papers published in cancer cytopathology, but it's just share a uh, issue about in COVID-19 how we look at our procedures and how we deal with our cytology samples. It's very important to look at the issue of biosafety. So if anyone to, to have a, a correspondence or an A-code work, just like the, the other articles, I would love to read them and, and rewrite a correspondence. Today's talk is all is about three f outlines. Firstly, I will briefly introduction of the COVID-19 and current vaccine development. 
and then the COVID-19 impacts of published articles. And third is a practical issue about the biosafety of preparation of our cytology samples. And lastly, because I'm really far away from you, so I would like to introduce a few about Taiwan's general strategies for COVID-19. COVID-19, as everyone knows, is the third disease caused by coronavirus as a pandemic. And as everyone knows, we have the SARS coronavirus 1 in 2002 and 2003, uh, majorly in East Asia, especially in China, Taiwan, Singapore. So everyone can see it's a pandemic, ep uh, epidemic there. But then we got the MERS in Middle East just uh, in 2013 and 2014. And this year we are very difficult in coronavirus type two. So coronavirus family is really, you know, a potential biohazard agent to our human society. But his structure is very simple. Everyone can remember. He has membrane protein, spike protein, and encoded uh, RNAs. So everyone can understand one thing, virus is very fragile. If you can destruction its membrane and spike proteins, the nuclear exit is very easy to be irritated. So uh, this infection in our cytology practice is very important. If you do the disinfection, especially on the surface or in activation to our sample, is a major step to prevent you and your staff away from this infection. Compared to the other coronavirus, all the three pandemic things are, uh, sorry, all the three pandemic things are belong to beta coronavirus. So you can see that they are in the same genus, but their biological effects are different. If you see the type one coronavirus, they share the same receptor with coronavirus 2, and the priming is also the same, TMPRSS2, but the antibody e effect is not so promising. About a type 1, the neutral antibody from our, auto, from our human immunity is good, but uh, the type 2 is not. So if you see the type 2, they are, their, uh, their self antibody is not so long or not so strong to prevent you have a second hit about this virus. And if you see the reproduction rate compared to the MERS and SARS type one, the type two, the reproduction rate is much higher. But compared to the inf uh, in flu, influenza virus, the reproduction rate is still low because it's not so airborne. Majorly, it's still through a larger droplets to contact each other through physical contact or through a very close contact. The incubation time even longer than the MERS and SARS. And especially, we have a lot of asymptomatic person or mild symptom persons. So let's make the coronavirus to a, a big problem in our society. The clinical characteristic you can see mostly echo to a type one in, 20, uh, in 2003. Mostly our hair care workers are the potential risky group to be infected. So we should take care, especially you have the clink of FNN clink or rose aspiration. We should protect with appropriate PPEs and appropriate procedures. The symptoms always be fever, and about about uh, 17, pa 18 patients have no image changes. That is what we call is a symptomatic or mild symptom persons. And if you do the hemogram, you can see generally most of per, uh, infected people would be leukocytopenia. So it means its immune attack is very important to thrive out your immunity. It's the, ma it's the major transmission route still be 
direct contact or indirect contact or close droplet uh, transmission. Of course, the airborne small droplet transmission is possible, but it's mostly due to a very high viral load and close contacts to the airborne small droplets. And your immunity is relatively low, you will be more sensible. And everyone talk about, especially in the beginning of uh, when my first paper published, everyone de uh, have a facial mask in debate. Now we know facial mask is essential to pre prevent this kind of uh, pandemic. At least you can, you can p protect yourself and protect the infected person to do a strong spreading. That what I want to do, uh, say, uh, these cultural differences, Eastern style. In Eastern, most of people in Japan, in Taiwan, in Korea, in China, in Singapore, most of people love to f wear a mask to protect their family. But Western style, maybe they love to st you know, wear the facial mask in the upper face. So it's maybe more stylish, but now everyone should wear a mask. And how about its scientific evidence? The Hong Kong University has do the ex experiment by the infected persons. They, they analyze the droplet particle larger and the small airborne aerosol particles. If, you, if the patient's infected with coronavirus, with mask, they can protect them with away from the larger droplets. Aerosol, small droplets, still protective, still effective. But for influenza, influenza virus is definitely an airborne virus. It's very effective, can be sprayed. With larger droplets, yes, influenza cannot. With, with surgical mask cannot be sprayed. But with small particle, influenza still can penetrate with small aerosol particle to infect everyone. So at least the uh, in this coronavirus pandemic, with mask, we can protect ourselves, even larger droplets transmission or small aerosol particle, we can have protective effects. So mask at least uh, to facial, uh, with mask, facial mask, uh, with uh, coronavirus infection can be effective. And now we can talk about, uh, recently is the, this is a very big news. We have uh, Pfizer, Biotech, new, new vaccine has been very high effective uh, news. So everyone look forward to the vaccine success. And as we know, this coronavirus structure have many structures. Mostly, we could use the X protein to do the, you know, to do the potential vaccine because X protein is the major protein who can attach to our cell and entry their RNA into our cells. So, the, if we can, we, if we can recombinant or we can do the X protein RNA to regenerate in our cell, we can have the natural immune, but without a viral attack. So we have many strategies to prepare the vaccines. As you know, our vaccine development in a traditional way should be take uh, 10 years, maybe 15 years. But nowadays, it's only one year we can develop a vaccine successful. And it's a very good thing, but the so far in clinical Phase three, we have potentially one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven potential clinical phase three can be pr approval. And now the first one is Pfizer's. A uh, Pfizer's is an RNA vaccine. So now it take the you know advantage. And if you want to know this, this all these steps, you can follow the website by the, you know, the nature provided this, this vaccine tracker website. It's real time, you can follow all the vaccines. But in a safe way is, yes, 
now the biotech is the first one to, to announce its vaccine efficacy. But still another worrisome reason is its production dose is not so high. As everyone know, we have billions of people potentially, uh, potentially need to take these vaccines. But its yearly, its yearly production is up to only 50 million doses. Mm, although nowadays the Pfizer tr uh, announced they try to produce more, but if you want to reach an herd immunity, they need more doses. It's the vaccine is, try is a way to reach the herd immunity, but the major thing is your coverage should be high enough. It, it means the dosage of vaccinated persons people should be higher than maybe maybe 60 or 70 per person coverage. We can have herd immunity to protect each other. And the, the other happy thing is we still have the other vaccines. If the Johnson Johnson or the Oxford vaccine can be, you know, can be successfully approval and uh, be productive, their production sh should be higher than the Pfizer's vaccine. We, ho we hope all these vaccines can be effective and largely produced. Then we can enjoy uh, herd immunity and we can have travels again. But it may take one or two more years as everyone expected. And Pfizer's uh, strategy is use the spike protein RNA. They are encoded in a lipid nanoparticle. The other vaccines use the vi viral vector to entry the cell. Use the lipid nanoparticle relatively is not biohazard, is more natural and more easy to uh, to be uh, to be to be induce immune uh, more less easy to in induce immune response because it's lipid. But the other, the, the other worrisome is this lipid nanoparticle effective or not effective? Because lipid nanoparticle is, is, is more easy to be destructive. But the Pfizer's, the Pfizer's vaccine uh, successfully uh, proved they, they are effective. So they are effectively to transport the mRNA of X pro protein into the cell, and the cell will express the X protein on the surface. On the surface, and our APC, antigen presenting cells, will be recognize this X protein and subsequently produce the corresponding antibodies. And the, effect, the effective antibody may be weeks or months. We we just look at the, their results. We hope it's a long-term antibodies. And then we are go to the next outline. We look forward everyone to see everyone again, especially in e ECC next year. The next talk outline is about the, uh, the impacts. How about the impacts of COVID-19 in cytology? As we, as we guess, our workload should be dramatically decreased, and the new job is freezing. And our trainee or our, our student or young, young staff, their education should be used a virtual or web-based web education. So this impact is, is a general impact in every, in every field. I take an online survey on Asia Pacific cytology societies, including China, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Southern Asia, including Cambodia, and Indonesia, and South Asia, Bangladesh, and uh, India, and Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and Uzbekistan, and Australia, and New Zealand all for, uh, 24 nations and 167 labs. They corresponded me about the, the, their caseload and their strategies and their malignant rates in, uh, in uh, 2020 f 
February 1 to April 30. And compared to the next last year, April, uh, February 1 and to April 30, three months comparison. So I think it's a very general survey to Asia Pacific uh, labs. As you know, yes, everyone, everything decreased. All the, nearly all the labs report their caseload change is dramatic. What is dramatic? Everything is, is down, is decreased. So it's very significant decrease, more than 10%. We take a significant decrease over 10%, it's a significant decrease. But only very few labs, they have increased of their caseload. Nearly everyone decreased their case. And if you compare to the, the you know, the, the malignant rate and case load decrease, you can see when you, when you see the over 50% decrease, this is non-gene, this is gene, about 58, uh, 58 labs and 71 labs is have, have very significant decrease in gynecology and non-gynecology. But the malignant rate change over 50% over is not so, so much. Most of the labs have no malignant no malignant rate changes, no difference in gynecology and non-gynecology. It means uh, one, uh, one thing, uh, generally the case load, e either gynecology or non-gynecology have a significant de decrease, but the malignant rate didn't significant change. And how about their work pattern? I don't know in Finnish uh, how about your work pattern change, but in Asia, most of people say they have new biosafety protocol, the like new SOP, and uh, their work arrangement has changed. About 42% labs they have to work in shift, especially uh, some cytopathologists, about 10% have to work from home, especially in national lockdown, and about eight, about 2% of staff ha were unemployed. And about 34% uh, of staff, they have deployed to provide other services, uh, especially for PCR, for uh, COVID-19 RNA testing. So it's our, you know, it's our first wave impacts. It means when the, when the COVID-19 attacks, uh, our work pattern change, our job may lose, and our, our routine work may be changed to support the PCR works. And the other very great paper from, Ivana also participated in, in this, in this uh, in this survey and as a major author. And it's initiated by professor from Italy, Professor Tranconi, I, I think. Professor Tranconi is a very, is a very outstanding cytopathologist. He initiated this global survey from 23 nations and 41 labs. They take four week comparison from the first national lockdown so they compare from the diff different areas. So this, this paper provides us a more global, uh, more general response, and especially they provide real data. You can see every participant respond, they have very dramatic case load decrease from, from nearly 0% or from to the 98% decrease. So generally, everyone is decreased, and in average, the, the reduction is 45.3%. So it's echoes to our Asia Pacific survey. Every, everyone is, is uh, most of labs is decreasing. And um, 
in every type from pap smear, urine cytology, effusion cytology, breast and thinnate, lymph node, thyroid, and respiratory tract compared to the pandemic er uh, period and the last year corresponding period last year, their difference is dramatic. So all type is decreasing. But interestingly, only pap, pap smear have a percentage change decrease. The other, the other type of cytology, the relative percentage is increase. So I think the pap smear is the most, you know, it's the most uh, effective cytology type especially in, in Asia, we also have the similar results. People uh, don't go to hospital, so they didn't take the pap smear, and the pap routine pap smear is dramatically decreased, so that the cervical cancer screening is, is relative healthy and in difficulty. So I think after COVID-19, we should think about these things. And if you compare to malignant rates, you can see all the 41 labs, they generally, their malignant rate differences uh, are very close to the zero. And overall, by the metastasis forest plot, their overall increase is 5% around. So they, in, in this paper, they, they say overall malignant rates would be it's increased, but compared to our Asia Pacific standard, we take 10% as our significant change. So it's still in our in our survey it's still taken as a similar results of malignant rate changes. So I think even in global survey we have the similar results. Yes, our case load every type is decreasing, but the malignant rate change is still mild. So the summary of COVID-19 on cytology is a significant decrease of case load in all types of sp specimen. No significant difference of malignant rate, uh, especially only very mild, 5% generally in global survey. Despite of a uh, few, few employment, work in ship or work at home is common, especially in national lockdown. A new biosafety protocol was uh, mostly implemented. And Chinese education and conferences are go virtual or website, web-based. Web, web, web okay, let's move the third outline, the laboratory biosafety. I think it's very important, but everyone should, has been has known about the important pearls. The biosafety, especially in cytology lab, we should care about the four cores. Firstly, we should take the XOPs, the standard of procedures, seriously. Everyone should know about how you deal with every step and follow the the good micro organism practice procedures. And then we should secure, we have adequate PPEs and everyone wear the adequate PPEs in different samples, especially fresh samples. Our sample need to vortexing or mixing. It's very essential to, you know, to wear adequate or, or appropriate PPEs. And the third is a passive protection. It means you need to do the surface disinfection. Dis dis it means we should clean our desk, we should clean our tables routinely before and after dealing with uh, samples. It's very important, but it's very routine, but maybe, you know, if you ignore this important, se important step, you will put everything in danger. And lastly, if you can inactivate our samples, you can safely deal with uh, and processing our samples. And I, what I want to say is the surface disinfection, you don't need to take very special solution. 
nearly all the sanitary uh, commercial cleaning solution can kill coronaviruses. So just use the commercial ones to do the surface disinfection. And then the most of our uh, cell blocks or paraffin blocks are infected, are in activated samples. So don't worry about your paraffin blocks or cell blocks because they are formatting fixed. Formatting fixed sample are totally inact inactivated samples. It's totally safe. Because formatting is, 13, uh, is 37 percent formaldehyde solution. And t our routine use 10 percent formatting is, uh, is, is 3.7 form formaldehyde solution. And in our, in our correspondence, you can see the 10 percent formatting to dealing with coronavirus. Oh, if you deal, if you a solution put in, uh, if you sample put this in, put in this solution over 30 minutes, you have no longer infective. So most of the cell, blo uh, cell block and paraffin blocks totally safe. How about our, our uh, PEP stand? PEP stand is very safe because PEP stand, the first step of PEP stand is fixation in alcohol of uh, I think 90% or 70%. Uh, everyone have different Pepsi mean, uh, Pepsi mean preparation. But at least over alcohol 70% and 50 minutes. If you take the 10 minutes, the viral load has dramatically reduced to less than, I, th I think less than 0 0.001. So it's very low viral load, so it can be taken as inactivated. So alcohol over 70% is okay. If you use the other, especially 100% masano, it just take five minutes. So take this, take this percentage as our, you know, as our safe percentage, safe concentration. If you prepare pax mirror, is very safe, but you prepare, uh, uh, I think, uh, the dry stands. You should take, you know, you should take uh, attention, especially when you want to mix up something. You should in a, a biosafety cabinet to dealing with these pr procedures, because when you mix something, they are still fresh and maybe create some drop leaks. Uh, if if you didn't care or wearing a uh, mask in, uh, inappropriate, you would be easy to attach or inhale it, these droplets. So take care. Especially frozen section of lung samples. You should wear PPEs and you should in a dedicated area. Because we, after, uh, before and after we're dealing with these fresh airway samples, we would take surface disinfection. It's so remember, PPEs and a dedicated area and disinfection. You can protect all your samples and yourself. And how about the sample differences uh, of the biosafety issue? Yes, I think only have um, only have major three types of of samples, we should take concerns. The airway samples, no matter they are respiratory upper airway or lower airway samples, because there are, are their RNA PCR is highly positive, and viral culture is very easy positive. The other is bloody samples. When you take, when you receive a sample very bloody, you should take concerns because bloody samples can have very high viral load in the blood. And eye droplets, the conjunctiva smear should be taken care of because it's equal to the bloody sample. And the other three intermediate risk is relatively risk, but seldom be discussed because their PCR possibility is relatively low, is urine and plural and pericardial. These three is our routine cell type. 
cytology types. And we're dealing with these three these three fluids sample every day. But it's very seldom to to taste positive in these kind of uh, samples. S but I still take them, they are intermediate risk. And low risk are ascites, pap smear, semen, and synovial fluid, and CSF. Because the, these, these kind of uh, cytology samples is very few reports say they are, they are viral positive, very few. So we should take, it, uh, take all these types as low risk group. And recently, the Korea Society have published 1,000 1, uh, cases of severe COVID-19 patients, and all their specimen types pos uh, PCR positivity. You can see, echo to our published paper, the upper airway, the lower airway, and all those were still the most positive group. And the sputum, relative intermediate risk is urine, and blood and stool, fecal oral is uh, another possible route to spread the virus, but not major, and still need to scientifically proven. But stool positivity is still high, and no swab. So these things, these things are we, we need to take them very seriously. And I conjunctive vas secretion, three percent. So you can you can see our. Uh, our suggestion, ascites, pap smear, semen, or CSF, still very low positivity. The so in general, we can see all our cytology sample in a table. When we're dealing with high risk, our intermediate risk, you can dealing with these cytology samples in a in a class biosafety class two cabinet with uh, appropriate personal protection PPEs. When we're dealing with uh, low risk samples such as ascites, brushing, washing, and uh, pap smears, vagina smears, or discharge, CSF, synovial fluid, semen, or cell blocks, is because it's totally inactivated. You can, with our standard procedures, so the only gray zone is intermediate risk. You, if you take this very seriously, you can follow the high risk. If you think your standard procedure is still trustable, just go on the standard procedures and do the disinfection and wearing pro appropriate PPEs as you routinely did. And one uh, special occasion is how about roles? Because Rapid on site, we cytotech or cytopassage need to uh, be on site. And on site may be exposure to the coughing or the sneezing of the patient. So, about the rapid on, on, set, on site evaluation, we should take care the same standard with the uh, clinical doctor doing the procedure with the same standard. We should wear very high protection, N90, uh, N95 mask, or, and uh, we should wear uh, eye protection, gloves, and long sleeved water resistant gowns to protect uh, ourselves because we are in the same room, we are in the same occasion where everything happened to the clinical doctor, we, sh we are taking the same risk with them. And remember, use the same room, because every everyone potentially have uh, COVID nineteen. We should dedicate, uh, we should pr do every procedure in a very special and dedicated room. We cannot change the place in because you, you, if we today we use the room A, tomorrow we use the room B, and now the virus can be you know can be spread out in different places just in a very dedicated, very special room, or very highly, highly airflow uh, uh, spreading room to spray out these droplets. 
Anyway, the, the rapid on-site usually wear a very good and very high protection mask and uh, and the protections and prepare the dry slides and read the dry slides on-site and promptly. And remember, the other samples are fixed in alcohol or prepared to the cell blocks. Okay, still remember the, uh, next year we in Sydney, in ECC Sydney, oh, IAC Sydney. Lastly, I want to talk about Taiwan. I think it, uh, this is my last outline. The, about the second wave now have occurred in several our neighborhood, such as France, U UK, or United States, and Germany. And in Finland and Taiwan, we are very lucky because we didn't have dramatic increase of new cases. So we are still doing very well in COVID-19 pandemic. And although we are very far away from each other, in Finland and in Taiwan, we still have very low new cases increase. So we are very doing very well. We, we have very similar culture and similar discipline uh, in you know, in border control and in protection each other. And Taiwan compared to Finland, we are much smaller. Taiwan is eight times smaller than Finland. And Taiwan is relatively higher, highly dangerous in COVID-19 because most of, a lot of Taiwanese si uh, citizens re reside in China and work in China. And we are very close to China. But as you know, we are not <laughs> have very good, good relationship with China. So when they occur the spatial pneumonia in Wuhan, we really concerned about this this outbreak. So we take very early step to do the border control and to do the fast max storage. Today in Taiwan, we have only about. I think uh, less than 600 cases, and no local case for seven months since April 3rd. Most of the cases are imported, are immigrators, visitors. So uh, more interestingly, recently we have one case of m sample mismatch. So one innocent case was tested positive and quarantined, but eventually, the sample, the F4 word sample are all negative. And then we look back to the, his sample and check the DNA. It's not his DNA. So it's a mismatch, sample mismatch um, error. So you know, when you do a lot of tests, we should look, we should, we should take care about this kind of te technical errors, especially uh, we are dealing with some so many potential bio biohazard samples. They are more risky to miss up everyone. And how about our core tips? Of our core tips, I think, is early prevention. Because when, when you do the first step correctly, then you just need to sustain your correctness. So we have very fast decision making and fully authorized from presidents. We didn't argue together. We just you, we just have consensus and do everything together. And people follow the rules of the general general commander. And the general the central epidemic command center build up the public trust and everyone follow the their policies. And uh, we have very good because we are a small island. We but very high populations. We have very close and very highly coverage uh, health care system. It's t nearly free to everyone. So everyone can take, you know, if you got the symptoms, you can be, tech, be taken care of by very, you know, very prompt and very easy and very affordable medical care. So this this is why in Taiwan, we have no great numbers because to to visit doctor is very easy. To to enjoy the the medical service is very free. 
And as I, as I say, we prepare to do the early prevention very early. So in January, in January, we start to build up the face mask production lines uh, and increase our production, production amount uh, to daily 850 million per day. So they make us can even protect ourselves, supply our people, and then we even export our face masks and send our face masks to our neighborhood, to our airlines, to Europe, France, to United States. We s it because it's, it's political, <laughs> it's very political, but I think it's good will. Yeah, so we send our face mask to do our best. And how about my daily life? If I want to, uh, if I want to take my face mask, I can from my hospital, or I can check with my mobile phones with this app, or with, with these websites. I can check the Google Map, uh, uh, what is the nearest uh, area or uh, nearest uh, pharmacist store around me, and the pharmacy store can provide me uh, uh, can provide me face mask to everyone. And this is his storage. Adults, 555. Children, 2,696. So I can understand every store have different storage, and it's real time. If I want to buy the face mask or take ma face mask, I can check this. And everyone have their limited amount to buy. So you don't need to worry about you have no mask to buy. Everyone can buy the fa surgical mask. And in public, we need to take attention about our fever. If you are over, if you are over 37.5, you cannot take any MRT trends or any public transmission. You just need to go home or go to hospital to do take medicine and rest. And you must wear face mask or you cannot take the train. So face mask and no fever and social distancing. And in hospital, I, when I enter my hospital, I need to check my fever, my temperature. If I have no fever and I check with my national security card with my medical record, I didn't have special uh, record or I have no traveling ho history, then I can go in to my hospital. They will take a stamp on my hand to show I'm clean. And then in my office, I still need to self-assessment and report my top body temperature daily, every day. If I have uh, symptoms, I need to self-report. Um, I have symptoms or I have uh, illness, and then I, I was supposed to take a rest in, uh, in, in my home. I cannot go to, go to work. So daily, we, s we need to fill up this, this, uh, this, uh, this form to report my body temperature and symptoms. But except these measures, I can still live uh, my happy life normally in Taiwan, especially I can, I can play some balls, I can teach, I can enjoy a music party at the harbor side and uh, with my families and my classmates and with my friends to, to take dinner with my mentor and mentor's, uh, mentor's, uh, mentor's husband and my children and to enjoy coffee sh together. So totally normal. If everyone to want to connect me, you can also add my Facebook account, just like Ivana. Thank you, everyone. And OK, it's time to, uh, to end my talk. I hope everyone have a happy Friday. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. It was really a huge package of data. We have learned a lot. And nicely, we have learned about COVID. We have learned about biosafety, but we have also followed some 
culture and way of life in Taiwan. Thank you. Thank and you. Now, the talk is open for discussion. So if you would like to ask something, you can unmute yourself or you can put your question on the chat. So unmuting is on the lower part on the left and in the middle is this chat function. If there are no other questions, I have one. I would like to ask, as you are involved in uh, medical students uh, teaching, how it's going? Do you have like part virtually and part living? Can you comment on it? Yes, it's very, uh, you know, it's a very difficult decision to teach p physically, especially in the first wave. In the first wave, Taiwan still have local case. But if we, uh, our, our, ed uh, our government's educational department said, if any university have one local case, we should suspend our teaching for two weeks. If we have two students infected with COVID-19, we should suspend for all the semester, just uh, totally, totally whole uh, university. So every university take this, you know, take this policy very, very seriously. So every day, in the dormitory, and in the, the gates of the university, we should we should have we have a lot of teacher need to check the body temperature of the students, and ensure they are wearing mask. Then they can go into the the rest classroom. And then their, their class leader, the student's class leader, need to report every student's temperature every day to their, to their class instructor. So every day we take the documents to everyone. Even they, are, they didn't go to the class, we still need to follow his or her condition. So it's, you know, it's very difficult time, especially in, in March. In, and uh, in April, we are very worried about the, you know, the outbreak in the university. But hopefully, in Taiwan, we didn't, you know, we didn't have outbreak. We just have uh, four university have one. Each, in each university have one student infected with COVID-19. But every student have a traveling history, so it didn't, you know, it didn't create an outbreak. We cease every spreading from very source. So it, I think it's very important to early prevention. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree with you. So are there any other questions? I can't see any question on chat. Yeah. So it's clearly visible that your talk was covering everything from the A to Z that people now have no questions, but maybe it's also culture. <laughs> yeah, it's also yeah. culture, just like Taiwan. Everybody is yeah. shy. So I say yeah. the, A, the, you know, the culture sim similarity may be shy and young. Because in, <laughs> in Finland, you look, you know, still very young. <laughs> So, uh, you know, in, is, uh, is genes problem, <laughs> shy and young. <laughs> yeah. But Mark, great thanks. And I hope that it will not take many months. We can see at least hopefully in Wroclaw next year during ECC where we have our yes. finish session. And thank we you. have to hope and thank you a lot so if there are some questions you can contact me and i am in touch with mark so if you can now stop your yeah great so now we will continue our webinar in finnish so many thanks and virtual